When the curtain is raised on China's annual political meetings, the two sessions, national lawmakers and political advisers from across the country converge on Beijing to hash out policy, review social and economic measures and offer suggestions. During these meetings, deputies to the National People's Congress attend discussion sessions, known as group deliberations. The country's most high-profile deputy is President Xi Jinping. Since becoming top leader of the CPC 10 years ago, she has attended over 50 of these group deliberations, as well as discussions with the nation's political advisers. Away from the fanfare given to top-level policy priorities at an event of this significance, you might be surprised to learn that for Xi, the hardships and aspirations of ordinary people take centre stage. At a meeting of political advisers representing agriculture, welfare and social security at this year's two sessions, Ishi Dawa, head of Sichuan Civil Affairs Department, showed Xi two pictures. The pictures were taken in Atu Li'er, a tiny community perched on the side of Daliang Mountain, which is why it's also known by another name, the Cliff Village. For a long, long time, the only way to get out of the village was via a rickety vine and wood ladder. This meant that the community was all but cut off from the outside world. In 2017, however, a new, safer steel ladder made from 6,000 pieces of scaffolding was installed. By May 2020, more than 80 poor families had left the village for new homes and lives nearer to the country seat. Xi Jinping has always shown great concern for rural development. This is Bi Shenzhong, a village party secretary in the northwestern province of Qinghai. During the group deliberation of the Qinghai delegation in 2016, she spoke at length with B, covering a range of topics from crop rotation to subsidies. Within five years of this conversation, China would announce it had eradicated absolute poverty. As a result, the rural strategy has now shifted to what is termed revitalization. This initiative is very important to Xi. If the party is going to successfully lead China along the right path to achieve the development stage known as a modern socialist country. Indeed, earlier this year, during his annual pre-spring festival trip, this time to Shanxi province, Xi stressed that agriculture and rural areas needed to be modernised if China was to progress toward this goal. This is Zhou Yijie. Today, he's a forest ranger. About a year ago, he had the opportunity to share his passion and vision with the president. For 35 years, Joe cut down the very woods in Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region that he now protects. In 2015, he put down his axe, picked up a shovel and began to plant trees on the land where he once felled. This experience has changed his whole outlook and now, as a national lawmaker, he's an advocate for environmental protection. According to Joe, the main topic of conversation with Xi was conservation, and for good reason. Boasting over 100,000 square kilometres of state-managed forest, Inner Mongolia is now known as China's Green Great Wall. Xi has stressed on many occasions that China must guarantee clean water, air and land for its people ultimately calling on the public to protect the environment as if their lives depend on it. And indeed, many do. 
This is Lord Jia. He is the head of a hospital in Hubei province, which gained global attention as the center of the COVID-19 outbreak here in China back in 2020. That same year, she spoke with Lord during his province's group deliberation session. She said the selfless care that the octogenarian patient received was testament to putting the people first and doing whatever it takes to save lives. According to law, in Hubei, more than 3,600 patients over 80 years old recovered from COVID-19. Seven of them were over 100 years old. This is Liao Changyong. He is a famed Chinese globe-trotting baritone. And back in 2014, he told Xi he had a dream. Speaking during a group session of the Shanghai delegation in March 2014, Liao said that works by Chinese people should and could be in the repertoires of the world's major opera houses. This is not the first time that she has talked about the role of culture to China's soft power. This is Mi Xue Mei. She's a senior manager at a clothing company in the economic powerhouse of Guangdong. Back in 2018, when she joined deputies from the province, Mi spoke to Xi and said that something from his New Year's address really spoke directly to her, that happiness is achieved through hard work. Xue Mei, Mi's given name, is a literal translation of the two characters for snow and plum. If Chinese people hear this combination, it immediately conjures up images of hardy plum blossoms blooming in the snow. Throughout her life, Mi has been as resilient as her namesake flower. Hailing from a poor rural family in northwest China, at 22, she joined the country's hundreds of millions of migrant workers and left the countryside for a job in the city. Initially employed as a security guard, over 20 years she worked her way up. Ever since becoming an NPC deputy in 2018, Mi has made it her mission to represent the rights and beliefs of this social group of over 200 million people. Over the years, she has had various interactions with migrant workers, writing to them, visiting their workplaces, and listening to them. And so, far beyond the curtain falling on the two sessions, she and the party continue to work hard on addressing the priorities of the people, from poverty to prosperity. Chinese 